board of control for it and changes ice cream for it, how do you feel? Yeah, well, the best of five, I suppose that, that's his philosophy. Um, <laughs> as, as you've seen tonight, um, I displayed skill, um, determination, will to win, boxing ability, um, and I beat James McGowan in every aspect of his game. I took away his confidence, which took away his ability, which made me become the, the, the winner. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd give, happen to give James the a rematch. If he wasn't so dangerous with his head, as you see from my face, I've got how many cuts on my face, every one from his head. Um, so, you know, I've beaten him, I've beaten him twice. Uh, what more do I need to do? Um, but I always said that after I beat Jamie Degal, that's me cleared up the domestic scene and I'm looking for bigger and better things. Um, maybe that's James, maybe it's not. How many stitches have you got in? Uh, eight, I think. Eight. Uh, yeah, there's, a few, there's a few dotted around. <laughs> George, would you say it's the most satisfying moment of your pro career? Yeah, definitely. It was satisfying when I beat him the first time, purely because everyone had ripped me off. But people had ripped me off on a much bigger scale this time. Uh, the, whole, the whole nation was behind me, but didn't think I was going to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a nice feeling in itself. But now, I think um, people in boxing, people out of boxing, have a lot more respect for my ability. They know that I need business. And I've never once said that I'm going to finish that call, and I think that's why I'm going to get to the top, because I know what I need to work on to get there, and I plan on doing it. Perhaps that's made your lungs feel better, and that's made your lungs well. Yeah, lungs are I've always wanted one of those. It is one of the prettiest belts, as you can see. And uh, you know, I've got two. I said I'd go in with one, and I'll come out with two. And that's what I've done tonight. What does it mean to work on your uh, Everything, you know. There's not one part of my boxing that's, that's perfect. Um, Whenever we, we, we get an opponent, we don't just work on what I've got, we work on a strategy to beat that opponent, and usually that involves um, bringing on different aspects of my boxing, adding new strings to the bow. Um, for this fight, we worked on punching long and, um, and outclassing James Miguel. We know that he, um, he one of his main uh, attributes was staying low and just letting his hands go. Um, Boxing on a rival promoter show. One concern was that he would just let his slappy dappy shots go, and and then you know, there'd be a quick stoppage. We've seen that before. So as soon as soon as he went to open up, I just wasn't there, and that was like, that was really like the whole night. As soon as he fought short, sure, catching. Now that you have fought him, excuse me. Now that you have fought him, George, is there a you know it was a grudge, but what about is there now a grudging respect for him? The fact that. Uh, We've gone 12 rounds together? Or yeah, the... yeah, yeah, there's always been respect. I've always respected him as a fighter, just not so much as a person because of the, the nonsense he used to say. Um, I'm happy to you know, move on with my life. I shook his trainer's hand, I shook his hand at the end of the fight. I'm happy. So then again, I'm in the number one, as I said from the start. George, so. <laughs> that was a majority decision. In a rematch, would you be even clearer, do you think? Yeah, if I didn't have blood going in my eyes, from all the headbutts that were going in, uh, from him stepping on my front foot, from him using his shoulder, using his elbow, then that would have been even easier. Um, but, you know, it's boxing, you've got to deal with that, and uh, you know, I clearly won the fight. His sort of main criticism was that you didn't really take steps forward, you were always running away from him, anything in there. So I, I didn't give it to him, is that what no, his main criticism was? It. You nicked it, he said. Yeah. I nicked you, it. You nicked the fight. Yeah. But didn't he say beforehand that he couldn't? He couldn't play Mr. Technical. But he just said you nicked the fight. Is that fair? No. Why not? Because I beat him. I beat him long range when he said that only a handful, I think no less than that, one or two people in the world can beat him long range. And I've done it. I've done it easy. Do you think he was baffled by your tech? Well, you know, James Agal works on confidence. Um, he's forever getting ego boost from his trainer. You know, and it worked, it's worked for him so far. You know, we saw some footage of him training, even on the exercise bike, yeah, good boy James, good boy James, good boy James, you know? <laughs> as soon as he stopped hearing good boy James, because he wasn't doing anything, he, nothing was working, he became clueless, and then panic set in maybe, anxiety, and uh, he just ran out of ideas, he ran out of ideas quick, and uh, once after, after that happened, then I started punishing to the stomach, to the body, uh, as I said I would, and then he just had nothing left. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've, I said naturally super middleweight now, I've filled into the division, I'm a big strong man now, the Kenny Anderson fight, I went through a gut check, um, and, and I took
took positives and negatives from that fight and, and become a better fighter. So hopefully you that tonight. George, do you, do you hope that you give confidence to D David Hay now? Going into his. Yeah, because he always needs a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he's asking me what do I need to do, and I think that forever give him reassurance. <laughs> the end of the question was that, that Adam's game plans work in, in, in your fight. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's a little bit more than just a fitness coach. <laughs> he knows a little bit about boxing, and he's, uh, he's, he, he always comes up trumps with a strategy. And uh, tonight was the same thing. It was just about me keeping my composure, keeping. Um, doing what I needed to do, and that's what I did. Did you get problems at all? No, I think I think um, one of the corners said that uh, I think round eight um, that they were worried that the red miss might have, uh, set in because I just retaliated quickly from a shot that went in. But apart from that, I thought box, box exactly what I needed to do to beat James. How confident were you when the final bell went? I was. You know, I knew I'd won. I knew I'd won. When I heard majority decision, I thought, oh, I'm on a rival promoter show. I'm the underdog. I'm I'm not the home fighter, but. No, like, I, I knew I'd won. I knew I'd won the fight, so it was no shot. How was it for you in the corner, Adam? You been delighted with George. Yeah, it's very proud of you. Because, like I said, you know, George, he's learning at championship level. And, and, and so is James. You know, they're learning at championship level. And you've got to give him a lot of respect for that because he's still making a lot of mistakes. But as time goes by, he's going to make less and less mistakes and he's going to become a better fighter. So you've definitely got someone to be proud of. Be excited about not to look forward to watching it. George, do you think your next fight will be against James? Or... No, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> how many times do I have to beat this man, as I say? Um, you know, after this fight tonight, I'm looking to go on bigger and better things. James has no titles. James has just come off a loss. I'm pretty sure I can find a better opponent out there than James Vigal. Who, you go on yeah, I'm going to sit down with Adam this week and we're going to discuss what's next in mind. Um, but literally, put 100% focus into into tonight. I haven't made bold allegations that I'm going to be world champion this time next year or anything like that. I always concentrate on the fight ahead and the task in hand. And now I need to find a new task. Do you make bold allegations when you're world champion? Oh, ah, yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I, I, I say I'm going to become world champion because that's my ambition, that's my goal. Um, but I don't have to put time frames or constrictions on it. Well, I mean, presumably you're actually doing really well up in the world top 10 then. Yeah, James Egao is world class, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's world class, so yeah. No, he's he's right, talented amongst right, talent in the, in the <laughs> top 20, isn't he? Yeah, he's, uh, I, I haven't paid attention to his ranking, but I'm pretty sure I'll be high up now. I've beaten unbeaten fighters, I've beaten good fighters, so I deserve a good ranking. George, looking back, um, how much did the Darrell sparring help you for this fight? Dur we, we, for a while, we treated this fight like I was fighting Darrell, because Darrell's a better. Um, version of James Miguel. He just does stuff quicker, neater, tidier, and uh, yeah, he, was, he was great sparring, but that was you know, five, six weeks ago. That wasn't my main sparring for this. It was just a, a tune-up to get me in check. And once I came back to London, chained in the Park Plaza, that was when it was time to put my foot down. And I had some quality sparring with Ryan Ashton and some other young guys who came coming in. Um, all had different attributes that, that had a bit of James in them. And, uh, you know, we spar for the learning, the technique, we don't spar to win spars, we don't have to try and find, find world class opposition and try and bash them up, we, we work on what we need to work on. You said you won't fight in the immediate future, it's the same way for maybe a few years down the line when you've both got different versions of a world title, could you possibly see that happening? Yeah, I can possibly see that happening. He's a, he's a good fighter, he's a good promoter, I'm pretty sure he will uh, somehow get there. He'll just have to go, again, he'll have to go a different route from me. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll be taking the more direct route. <laughs>